Hi everyone, it's me, Natalie. Um, I'm coming to you with a book haul. I went to the Lifeline Book Fest in Brisbane yesterday. So a charity, Lifeline, sells used books every year at all these different book fests around the country. And yesterday it was at the convention center in Brisbane with like four and a half kilometers of tables of used books. And just a, just a pile of people, like a pile of people. It was, it was hard. <laughs> it was, it was a slog. Like you had to go in there with, you know, with serious intention. So I have 41 books that I bought. Hmm. It was okay. I didn't find as many gems as I thought I was going to. There were lots of Danielle Steele and that sort of stuff. So if you're into that, that worked. But for me, I was just kind of struggling. I, I did find some gems. The, the thing I went for were these. The Agatha Christie's. Um, these aren't all Fontana editions. There was this woman that had this bag of Agatha Christie's and my sister saw her. I went with my lovely sister and she stalked her and whenever she offloaded one she didn't want, my sister would grab them and, yeah, <laughs> keep them <laughs> for me. So I got 10 all up. Look, I mean, these covers are just amazing. I just, I, I love them. And I really, every time I show them to you, I think I need to look up the artwork for the guy who does these covers. His name's Tom Adams. Anyway, so I added to that collection, which was exciting. <laughs> I also added to my Virago Modern Classic collection. And in looking at these, I, I noticed that um, the artwork on these are from Australian um, art galleries. So this one is from the collection from the National Gallery of Victoria. And this is from the Queensland Art Gallery collection. I just... I, I, I was excited about that. Um, yeah, this is an Australian, set in Australia in 1892 with the gold rush. So that would be cool to read about. Um, yeah, this is set in Ireland. I don't know when, eight, 1935. And this is set in Ireland again, th I think in 1900 with Lady Charlotte French McGrath. So yeah. These will be fun to eventually get to read, but I just really adore the, the covers of these as well. And yeah, I'm collecting them. It's exciting. Um, other things I found, I got um, like a First Nations word dictionary thing. But what I liked about this is it's broken down into the different um, tribes. So um, I'm able to sort of like the languages of Queensland and things like that. So reading through this with my kids will be great and i also got a dream time book but these these are awesome because they have gorgeous artwork with the dream first nations dream time stories so i love reading through these with the boys oh it's amazing so that that was a good find i also got tim winton's memoir which i definitely want to read i i'll be interested to see whether he can write as well about himself as he does about other people Got um, The Old Lie by Claire G. Coleman. This only came out last year, so this was a little bit of a win. Um, Claire G. Coleman's an Indigenous writer, so very excited. Her first book, Terra Nullius, I really liked, so can't wait to get to this. Now, I mentioned I went with my sister. You know when you go, like, book shopping with other people and they're like, you have to get this? She told me I had to get this, The Man Who Loved Children. Christina Stead is an Australian author, but sort of, I guess, 1950s, 1960s maybe? 1930s so um but this book is set in washington yeah in the 1930s about a family there so but um renee assured me that it would be great and i like her taste in books so i got that one and i got this book because of the cover because it says the garden book and it's australian it's a set in the dandenong ranges which is down near melbourne and um between the Depression and the Second World War. So the precarious it's about the precarious nature of Australian lives when gripped by fear and racial prejudice. So this is an Indigenous author because he was born in Hong Kong. So I don't know. I've never heard of Brian Castro before. Is that bad? Anyway, I got that. Other gems I got. I found an Emma Adafauna book. 
I loved her book Happiness. We all know that by now, so I need to read more from her. I um yeah, I'm very excited to see whether I love all of her writing. You know when you first discover an author and like, right, let's read the backlog and see whether she's amazing for all of her books. So yeah, there's one there to do that. Miriam Taze, Women Talking. This is I read another Miriam Taze and I loved it. So yeah, this is this is the big one apparently. So can't wait to get to that. And Sean, you read this, The Housekeeper and the Professor with Doris? I can't remember, but um, I remember seeing it being held up by Sean the Book Maniac, so I picked it up. Um, oh, oh, why are there maths equations in this book? I guess the professor is a professor of mathematics. Is that gonna be boring? Oh gosh, I shouldn't have looked before I started reading. <laughs> I got some Gerald Durrell books. Does anybody know Gerald Durrell? I'm sure everybody does, but to me, he's new. Um, a woman I listened to on a podcast says that's the best nature writing she read. Um, so that made me want to pick him up for sure. I think what Gerald Durrell does is give um, sort of life and personality to animals. I mean, look at that cover. The drunken forest with the big frog. How fabulous. Three singles to adventure. The big parrot on it. Yeah. This is the most um, famous one, I think. Anyway, if you've read Gerald Durrell, let me know if I'm on the right track with amazing nature writing. I added to my Trollop collection, I got, what's that? The Prime Minister, Marion Fay, he knew he was right, and Phineas Finn. I mean, Anthony Trollope can write a chunker, can't he? And you know, I didn't think about that when I thought I wanted to dive more into his work. Because they're just such large books. He read, wrote so many books. And if they're all like this, I'm going to be 60 and still trawling through his collection. But anyway. So yeah, I'm glad I have them so that they're there if I want to pick them up. I also added to my Dickens collection. Because everybody in Victoria last year was reading Dickens. And I felt like I was being left out. <laughs> so I want to do more of Dickens. Um, yeah, sorry. Bleak House. This is a fabulous cover, the old curiosity shop with old mate with his flash scarf there, but anyway. And then I got this, I loved this cover and it's this Oxford World Classics that I love, but I have always wanted to read this to my kids, like leading up to Christmas, but I need to do it before they get too cool to want to read books with me, hey? So yeah, I got Dickens. I got a Margaret Oliphant. Um, everyone was reading, not everyone. People were reading Margaret Oliphant piqued my interest in Victober, so yeah, that's Margaret. And um, this is about Kirsteen Douglas who flees from Scotland to avoid marrying a man she doesn't love and then like smashes it and becomes really wealthy and successful in London. So a female heroine in a Victorian novel. Hooray! And I couldn't leave this behind, and I don't really know why. It's beat up, whatever. This was, when was this published? Oh, I'm not going to show it. This has a man's name, Philip, with his phone number. Could give him a call and a chat after I read Waverly. It says it was read 411. That's pretty cool. Um, right, when was this published? First published in 1814. Um, and this is set against the backdrop of the Jacobite Rebellion of 1745. And it talks about this guy uh, whose loyalty to his regiment is threatened when they are sent to the Scottish Highlands. Oh, and he finds himself drawn to the charismatic chieftain Fergus MacIver. Oh, and his beautiful sister Flora. Oh, gosh. I thought that might be a male to male romance in a Victorian novel. I thought, wow, I've struck gold here. Anyway, it's a, it's a brilliant depiction of the old Scotland. I don't know why I couldn't leave that behind. Maybe I should get to it. Um, but wait, there's more. I bought 41 books. Did I tell you that? Yeah, 41 books. I got this. I mean, I've got to take all these things out, but this is um, what a gorgeous cover. It's another one of those Oxford World Classics. I mean, just beautiful. But somebody's obviously gone through it for study or whatever and written 
annotated it, which I didn't see. I just loved that cover. Gorgeous green. Anyway, I got an Iris Murdoch, Joe Smith. Hi, Iris. I don't know, set in Dublin in 1916. Loved the cover to tell you the truth. So make it up. This was first published in 1979. This author is from Trinidad, which I like. And I don't know why I keep being drawn to his work. I just, yeah, a bend in the river too, thinking it might be about a river, but you never know. I don't even know what it's about. So this is set in Africa. I don't know much more, but picked it up. I got a Steinbeck book I've never heard of before. Doris, have you heard of this one? Um, the Acts of King Arthur and His Noble Knights. And on the back it says that Steinbeck journeyed to the ancient city of Winchester to study at first hand the earliest surviving Mallory manuscript. I don't, I don't know. I don't know anything about this time period in history. I don't know. But, like, it's about Arthur and Camelot and all that sort of stuff. But that's it. That's all I've got. So... It's a splendid recreation of the great myth of Albion. So, Doris, do you want to read this to me? Because I might be lost and need some help. <laughs> anyway, John Steinbeck. Um, and for Bert and Sean, this is um, Simenon. These are kind of mystery novels. And I know that Bert likes Simenon, I think. Am I on the right track? And he's a French author. Am I on the right track? Oh gosh. Yes, he's French. It has a list in the back of um, all of his novels and they start from 1931 and go through till 1972. So yeah, they're all these kind of mystery novels. And I would really like to read them one day. I have another one somewhere, let me find it. Yeah, right, okay. The late Monsieur Gillet. Okay. Anyway, those are the two I've got. So, yeah, I collected this one yesterday. And then I've just got two other randoms. The boys and I love playing cards, so my sister found this for us. It'll be interesting to <laughs> make our way through there. We should tick them off. That'd be a lot of fun. And my sister, this is a must-read that my sister gave me. So, a uh, mothering book kind of talking about the concept of family in Western society, I think. Um, this woman leaves her life in New York to live with the Yequana Indians, a Stone Age tribe in the heart of the Venezuelan jungle. And then she returned with this outlook on the way that Western society brings up its children. So this could be cool to um, read. So yeah, that's my haul. 41 books that I got to add to my growing piles. I just told my family this morning that my intention is to fill every wall in the house with books. And their response was, well, how can we live here with all of those books everywhere? So I think we might have different ideas about what our house is gonna look like, but but you know, I'll, I'll wheel them around, don't you worry. <laughs> now I get the joy of putting all of these books onto my shelves and you know, putting them in the different themes that I've got racing around the shelves. And that makes me really happy too. Um, yeah, I'm just, I just love building my collection. So yeah, that's it. I'm going to go and put these on the shelves and I'll see you guys in another video. If you want to tell me about any of these books, if you read any, I would love to hear your thoughts. Okay, everyone. I'll talk to you later. Bye.